let's talk about tree diagrams. So, tree diagrams is another form of organizing probability, just like Venn diagrams were. Except for in reality, tree diagrams pretty much say that there one variable is a uh, sort of uh, conditional on the other variable. So let's take a look real fast. So we want to learn about tree diagrams in this case. And what is a tree diagram? A tree diagram uses variables that always have one variable that's conditional to the other variable. So basically one is always going to be based on the other. So we need to determine which variable is based off of the other variable to proceed. Okay. And I guess if this doesn't kind of base, kind of dox me a little bit of where you can kind of figure out where I'm, I'm basing all my stuff from. These are three towns in the state that I work in, or state that I live in. So um, if uh, someone from regular YouTube is watching this now, they've probably got a good idea of what, at least what state I'm in. Um, but when looking for a new place to live, a person estimates that a probability of living in Essex is 47% and 35% and chance of living in Perry Hall. They might also live in Owings Mills. The probability of purchasing a house in Essex is 24%, uh, and Perry Hall is 41%, and Owings Mills is 36%. Uh, their options, their other options is to rent out an apartment. Um, what are the following probabilities? So, First off, we kind of want to base um, what variable is going to be based off the other one. And in this case, it's going to be the probability of owning a house or renting an apartment. Because as you can see, the probability of renting a home changes based on whether or not we live in Essex, and Essex is 24%, in Perry Hall it's 41%, and in Owings Mills it's 36%. So the probability of a house or a probability of house is basically dependent on uh, where you live at. So I'm going to take this away for a second. We're going to build our tree diagram here. So a tree diagram works like this. There's branches on the bottom and there's branches coming off of those other branches. So I'm just going to kind of create like a, a little point there just because I like to have a nice little tree just like this. And then, so we've got uh, where we're going to live at. So I'm going to abbreviate here. E is for Essex. Uh, PH is for Perry Hall. And uh, OM is for Owings Mills. Uh, Essex is 47%, uh, which we're going to actually write as a uh, decimal as opposed to a percentage. Um, 0.47. Uh, is 47%. We're going to write the probability of living in Perry Hall um, as 35%. And then we don't have a percentage for Owings Mills, but this branch itself is considered a sample space. So it means they all have to add up to 100%. So if I do 0.47 plus 0.35 uh, and then subtract that total, which is 0.82, from 1, uh, then I get 0.18. So it tells me that the probability um, of me living in Owens Mills is 18%. And that makes a lot of sense because you know, there's no other place um, that, I, that we've, I've listed here. And um, we're going to assume that I'm going to go to one of these three places. So this has to be 100%. Now I can either live in a house or I can rent an apartment. Now, each time I uh, look at each thing, the probability of buying a house is going to change um, depending on where I'm at. So, if I'm in Essex, the probability of me purchasing a house is 24%. So that's 0.24. Okay, and these have to be 100%. Again, so each branch is its own sample space, so they have to add to 100%. So this other one has to be 1 minus 0.24 or uh, 0.76. 
for apartment. Then I look here, the probability of buying a house in Perry Hall is uh, 0.41. And then uh, again, this has to be 100%, so 1 minus 0.41 is 0 0.59. Uh, then buying a house again is uh, 0 0.36. And then 1 minus 0 0.36 is 0 0.64. Uh, and so there's my tree diagram. So now the very first probability on this paper is to ask, what is the probability of uh, living in a house or buying a house? Probability of buying a house or living in a house. So the thing about it is, is I can live in a house in one of three places. So it's not just adding these three together. It's basically buying a house and living in Essex, buying a house and living in Perry Hall, and buying a house and living in Owings Mills. And if you remember from previous lessons, the and is a multiplication. So what I'm going to have is 0.47 times 0.24 plus 0.35 times 0.41 plus 0.18 times 0.36. Okay, so let's do some multiplications here. So 0.47 times 0.24 is 0.1128 plus 0.35 times 0.41 is 0 0.1435. 0 0.18 times 0.36 is 0 0.0648. And then we want to add all these together. So I get 0.3211 or 32. 0.11%. Okay, now what's the probability of living in a house or buying a house and living in Perry Hall? Well, we kind of already figured that one out. That was the very first one. Um, 0.47 times 0.24. And that is 0.1128 or 11.28%. Okay. Three. What's the probability of renting a house and that house happens to be in Essex? Sorry, renting an apartment, not a house. I'm just going to rewrite that so A is for apartment. A and it's in Essex. So A and E. Just to be a little bit. I guess I should write it out. I'll write it out. Just do apartment. And Essex. So we look here, so Essex is 47%, but renting an apartment is 0.76%, so I'm going to multiply the two together, because it's an and. So that gives me 0.3572, or 35.72%. Okay, good so far. What's the probability of renting out an apartment? Now you can actually do this in one of two ways. So again, this one's just like the very first one. Probability of renting out an apartment. You could look at this like the one above and say, well, there's several ways you can rent out an apartment right here, here, and here. So you'd have to do renting out an apartment and being in Essex, renting out an apartment and being in Perry Hall, renting an apartment and being in Owings Mills. And so that would look like this.
Okay, or since renting an apartment is basically the complete opposite of buying a house, you could also just do one minus 0 0.3211 because it's basically not buying a house. You only got two options here. Either way, your answer should come out to be 0 0.6789 or 67. 0.89%. Okay, so now we're getting to the really fun ones. So renting out an apartment if they are living in a oh, in Owings Mills. So this one's actually not too bad. Um, it is a conditional probability. So if you remember correctly, and I'm going to write this one up here. A conditional probability is always a probability of A and B over the probability of A, the condition. Well, if you look real fast, the condition in this case, probability of renting out an apartment if they are living in Owings Mills, the, pro the condition is living in Owings Mills. Remember, the condition always follows the key word. So, we look at this and say, well, what's the probability of living in Owings Mills? Well, that's 0.18. And so now we want the probability of being in an apartment and living in Owings Mills. So that's 0.18 times uh, 0.64. And so we can just cross those out because if something's on the top as it is on the bottom, and everything's being multiplied and divided, just divide right out. So we end up with 0.64 or 64%. So that was a pretty easy one. Uh, the harder one is going to be our number six. Number six says, and let's bring it back up for one second. Number six says, living in Essex if they are buying a house. So now we have the condition of buying a house as opposed to the condition of living in any one place. So it's still the same given thing. But now the bottom is going to be the probability of living in a house. And so what's the probability of living in a house? Well, we already solved it right here. Buying a house, living in a house, either one. It's 0.3211. Okay? And it says living in Essex and buying a house, because both are probabilities. So living in Essex would be 0.47, and buying a house would be uh, 0.24. And so we did figure that. Oh, wait a minute. Back here, I made this is that's an error on my part. So this should be 0 0.1128, 0 0.3211. This was Perry Hall. So Perry Hall was actually, uh oh. Let's go back here for a second. So this one should actually be 0.35 times 0.41. So that's actually 0.1435. Oops, made a bit of a boo boo. But, you know, we can figure out. That's why pencils have erasers. But going back up here, now I have 0.1128 over 0.3221. And that gives me. 0.3513 or 35.13 percent. And there we go. There's our probabilities for that. All right, let's take a look at another example here. So, got all that. Let me pull this to the side here. So, example number two. This weekend I have a choice to go see Venom at AMC White Marsh, the Cinemark at Towson, or AMC Owings Mills. I estimate that the probability of going to White Marsh is 35%. The probability that I go to Towson is 42%. And there's also a probability that um, I can go in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening. At AMC White Marsh, there's a 3% chance that I see in the morning and 16% chance of seeing it in the afternoon. At Towson, there's a 2% chance that I see it in the morning, 10% chance I see it in the afternoon. And at Owings Mills, there's a 5% chance of seeing it in the morning, 
and a 12% chance of I see it in the afternoon because I refuse to wake up early in the morning for anything other than a job. And if I don't have to work, I ain't waking up that early in the morning. That's a true story for me. I used to have friends who would ask me all the time, hey, we're going to this matinee to go see a movie. And I would just say, cool, have fun. I'm not waking up that early. You have your choices, I have mine. Okay, so basically the times change based off the location. So we're gonna put the location right here. And I'm just gonna put Towson, T for Towson. I'm gonna put uh, a WM for White Marsh. And I'm gonna put an OM for Owings Mills. So let's see. There's a 35% chance that I go to White Marsh. This one might be obsolete soon because we might be losing all our theaters because of the COVID. And the probability that uh, I go to Towson is 0.42. And again, this all has to add up to 100%. So if I do the quick math, this is 0.77. Uh, so 1 minus 0.77 would be 0.23. Uh, and then we have morning, afternoon, and evening for all of these. Okay, so uh, the probability of going to the movies in the morning at White Marsh is 3%, which, don't forget, 3% is 0 0.03. Uh, oh, whoop, but it's in the wrong place. White Marsh is right here. Okay, 0 0.03. Uh, the probability of going in the afternoon is 16%, so 0 0.16. Going to Towson, there's a 2% chance. That's actually 0.02. Um, and the afternoon is 0.1, and then Owings Mills, there's a 5% chance of going in the morning, and a 12% chance of going in the afternoon, and then I need to do some adding and subtracting here, so this comes up to be 0.12, so 1 minus 0.12 is a uh, 0.88. That would add up to 100%, yes, okay. Uh, 0.03 plus 0.16, that would add up to be 0.19. One minus 0.19 is 0.81. Uh, and then 0.05 plus 0.12 is 0.17. Um, point, so that comes up to be 0.83. Okay, so that's my tree diagram. It's a little cramped, but it's okay. Um, what's the probability that I will go see it in the evening? Uh, it's going to be good because that's when I go see movies. Um, so let's see, 0.42 times 0.88 plus 0.35 times 0.81 plus 0.23 times 0.83. So 0 0.3696. Uh, 0.2835. And uh, 0 0.1909. Let me add them all together. And I get 0 0.844 or 84.4 percent. See, told you it'd be a really good chance I'd go see it in the evening because. Um, I'm not a morning person, so um, that's, I guess, something to think about. But what is the probability that I see it at Towson and in the morning? So Towson and morning. Well, let's see. Towson is 0 0.42 and morning is 0 0.02. 
So that gives me 0.0084 or 0.84%. Okay, let's see. What's the probability that I see it in White Marsh and in the afternoon? So let's see, White Marsh is 0.35 times 0.16. Okay, so I get any point zero five six or five point six percent. Okie doke. Then four. What is the probability that I see it at White Marsh and it'll be in the evening? Nope, that's actually, I read that incorrectly. It's what's the probability that if I see it in White Marsh, it'll be in the evening. So once again, the, uh, and you can take a look at it right here. The condition is for the if is if I see it in White Marsh. So the condition is White Marsh itself. So I'm gonna have 0.35. And then it's going to be white marsh in the evening, 0.35 times uh, 0.81. So those cross out, and I get 0.81 or 81%. Then I get what is the probability of seeing it? The probability that if I see it in the afternoon. I was seeing Owings Mills. So I need the probability of seeing in the afternoon, which happens to be six. So we're actually gonna jump down and do six first before we do five. So if I do six real fast, uh, put a little gap here. Probability of seeing in the afternoon. Now I can't do what I did before because there's not, there's three options as opposed to two. So I can't just take one minus the evening and get the afternoon, unfortunately. I'm gonna to have to do it the long way. But I can do that with morning once I'm done um, this one here. So let's see. 0.42 times 0.1, uh, 0 0.042 plus 0 0.35 times 0.16 is 0 0.056, and 0 0.23 times 0.12 is 0 0.0276. So if I add all those together, So that gives me 0.1256 or 12.56%. Okay, and now that I have that one, I'm gonna go back up here to number five and say five. I want the probability of afternoon at the bottom, the probability of afternoon and uh, Owings Mills on top. So that gives me the probability of 0.1256 in the denominator. I don't know why I say the bottom. I think it's because my high school students are rubbing off on me. But um, then uh, afternoon and Owings Mills would be 0.23 times 0.12 which gives me 0 0.0276 over 0.1256, which, if I do a little division, gives me 0 0.2197 or 21.97%. Okay, and then finally, what's the probability of me seeing it in the morning? Newsflash. It's not very big. So what I could do now is, since I have 
evening and afternoon, I could add evening, so 80.84 for two afternoon. So let's see, that gives me uh, six, nine. Let's double check that real fast. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But it's always good to do a quick double check. Yep. And then do one minus 0 0.9696, which gives me much bigger than I thought it would be. 3% chance, really? It's probably much lower than that. Okay. It's probably so close to 0%, it's almost negligible. Okay. So, that's how we do that one. Okay. So we got two more examples. Let's run to these two last examples. Uh, number three. So, number three. A local school, at a local school, the incoming ninth graders have a choice of two extracurricular activities to do during their special class period. About 71% choose gym class and the rest choose music class. Other students who choose gym class, 82% pass the class by the end of the year. Or the students who choose music, 97% pass the class by the end of the year. Okay. Because you know, music, singing is easy. Sorry, I said it. I used to sing. Still do sometimes. But it's an easy class. You'll deal. Okay, so. We can either go with gym. Really, gym's an easy class, too. I don't know why anybody would be not passing this. But um, gym or music. So 0.71 and then 0.29. OK, so pass, no pass. Pass, no pass. So we're going to pass this 82% of the time which means we're going to pass 18% of the time. We're gonna pass this one 97% uh, of the time and not pass it 0.03% of the time. So it's probably passing a class. We're gonna get 0.71 times 0.82 plus 0.29 times 0.97. So let's see. Point two eight one three. So that gives me eighty six. Point three five percent to pass the class. What is the probability of passing the gym class? So basically being in the gym class and passing it, basically. Um, because I didn't want to phrase it that awkwardly. <laughs> That's pretty much what we're looking for here. Passing a uh, gym class Gym class and pass is basically what we're looking at here. Oh man, my handwriting went all over the place in that one. That's okay. You heard my voice. So, 0 0.71 times 0 0.82, and that gives me 0 0.58822 or 58.22%. Oh yeah. What's the probability of pa of passing the music class? So basically being in the music class and passing. So then that would give me the other probability of 0 0.29 times 0 0.97. What's the probability of not passing the gym class? And what I was basically going for that one was, because this one's a little bit awkward, um, being in the gym class and not passing was what I was going for. Um, so 
So basically that would be 0.71 and uh, 0.18. Okay, and then what is the probability of passing class that, oh, well, given passing class given that you're in the gym class. So once again, given that I'm in a gym class, the bottom is going to be gym, which is 0.71. What's the probability that I pass it? So 0 0.71 times 0 0.82, once again, gives me 0.82 or 82%. Uh, what's the probability that I'm in the music class given that I passed or when I passed, passed the class? So again, we're going to do the probability of pass and then pass in music. So pass would be 0.8635. Pass in music would be 0.2813. So 0.3258 or 32.58%. And then finally, not passing the class. Let me put that up there for you. Uh, not passing the class would be. We can just do 1 minus 0.8635, which is 0.1365, or 13.65%. And that's my probabilities. OK, and now we got one more final example. Kind of like this one. that in a certain job employers make their employees take a drug test if they suspect that employee is on drugs the drug test is a 99% effective rate which means that 99% of the time if a person is not on drugs it will defect it will detect that a person is not on drugs calculate the probability the following probability assuming that at any point 5% of all employees are on some type of illicit drug well, depending on where you work, that might be too big or too small. I don't know. I don't judge. So, again, the what the test says is going to be the thing that changes based on whether or not someone is on drugs. So, what we're going to get here is... So, you on drugs? Yes. You not on drugs? No. 5% of people are on drugs, so 0.05, 95% are not. So the test kicks back a positive. Positive means that, yep, you're on drugs. So since it's 99% effective, this should be happening 99% of the time when that you are on drugs. You should be getting a false negative 1% of the time. On the other hand, if you're not on drugs, you should be getting a false positive 1% of the time. You should be getting a negative 99% of the time. So what is the probability that a person is on drugs and the test confirms that they are on drugs? So getting a positive when you're on drugs. So that's 0.05 times 0.99. So that gives me 0 0.0495, which is 4.95%. OK. 
Okay. What is the probability that a person is not on drugs, but the test says that they are on drugs? So, on dr uh, not on drugs, and positive, getting that false positive. So that would be 0.95 times 0.01. And that would give me 0 0.0095 or 0.95%. So at least a false positive is less than 1%. So that should be a good thing. Um, so what's the probability of getting a positive overall? Well, we just figured out the last two. Both indicate positive. It's the only two way we can do it. So we're just going to do 0 0.0495 plus 0 0.0095. And that gives me 0 0.059 or 5.9%. So regardless of whether or not you're on drugs, we should be getting a positive about 5.9% of the time. Interesting thing. What is the probability that a test generally tells someone they aren't on drugs? So in general, what's the probability of getting a negative? But once again, the probability of getting a positive is 0 0.059. And there's only two possibilities. We're just going to do 1 minus 0 0.059. And that gives me... 94.1%. Okay, given that a person is on drugs, so we know this person is on drugs, what is the probability that the test says they aren't on drugs? So, we know they're on drugs. What is the probability that, uh, so negative and drugs so 0 0.05 time over or under 0 0.01 times 0 0.05 and that gives me 0 0.01 or 1%. Okay. Six. When the test confirms when the test confirms that they are on drugs what is the probability that they aren't on drugs? So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Nope, I did that wrong. So, if we look real fast, uh, when, when the test confirms that so basically they get a positive, what's the probability that they aren't on drugs? So it's actually positive at the bottom. And then uh, they aren't on drugs. So uh, it would be no and positive. So 0 0.95 over 0 0.01 over, we already got the positive of 0 0.0. 495. So that would be 0 0.0095 or 0 0.0495, which would give me 0.0495. Wait a minute, something's wrong there. When the test confirms that they are on drugs, what's probably that they aren't on drugs? Yeah. No positive. That should be right. 0.1919 or 19.19%. Okay, and then that's it. Good.